Today's episode of The Mom Game is brought to you by our friends at Gateway Buick GMC at LBJ and Jupiter. I know that buying a car can be stressful, but not at Gateway because their slogan is Gateway's Got It. And just what does that mean? Well, it means Gateway's got a variety, a wide variety of new Buicks, GMCs, and GM certified used vehicles, all competitively priced because Gateway's Got It. In these busy times, we you want a car dealer who makes things easy and convenient. Well, guess what? Gateway's Got It. When you log on to gatewaybuickgmc.com, you look for the shop, click, drive button. This allows you to shop from the comfort of your home. And who doesn't want that? In fact, it's easy as one, two, three. One, select your vehicle. Two, create your offer. Three, schedule your delivery. And on top of all this, Gateway Buick GMC offers complimentary car washes for life. So when you want a dealer who has it all and who doesn't, Gateway's got it. You can find them online at gatewaybuickgmc.com or shop in person at LBJ and Jupiter. GMC, we are professional grade. Experience the new Buick. And guess what? Dun, 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 dun. We have a new sponsor of the mom game. So exciting. So exciting. And I know him very well. Do you know this dude? I know this dude. And so I will tell you, Julie, the world around us is crazy and unsettled right now. So whether you're wanting to stay put in your current home or wanting a change of pace, the McCoy team is here to help. That's my husband. Getting pre-qualified before you are ready to sell and purchase is always the first step in the process. Interest rates are at an all-time low, which means now is the perfect time to buy or refinance. You know this Mm -hmm. because you did it. We did. With the McCoy team. We sure did. There are a lot of mortgage companies that will sift through their automated, sift you through their automated automated processes, but that's not how the McCoy team operates. When you call, email, text Mike or his team, you'll get an actual human on the other end answering your questions and setting you up with honest guidance. I know because I live with the man and he is always on his cell phone. Mike and his team (laughs) operate in full disclosure, much like me, and will get you prepared for any purchase or refinance. Here's the deal, though. He's not going to get you in over your skis. If you can't afford a new purchase or refi, he is not going to recommend it. He just doesn't do it. I know it may sound cheesy and I know I'm biased, but my dude will take good care of you. This is his thing and he takes great pride in it, as does his team, and I am proud of them for that. So give him a holler, 817 987-2200 or schedule a free no obligation consultation at mccoyteammortgage.com and I have to say this he made me he's like legal purposes NMLS number 402132 Equal housing lender. There you go. I did it. We're so happy. To I know. Have I know. Hubby. We had a really great experience with him refinanced our house. Um, and you know, sometimes it just sounds like such a like such an undertaking and Process. such a headache. And I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I have time for this. I don't have time for all the calls and for all the emails. And they made it very simple for us. And then you're like, oh my God, all this, I, I got this money out of refinancing my house and my mortgage is dropped. I could have done this forever ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a really good feeling. And it's good to to know and trust the company that you're working with. For sure. And they do tra- take great pride in it. And he does work really hard at it. And he is very passionate about helping people do something they can afford, putting them in a better situation. The last thing he's going to do is put someone in a worse situation. Right. So very proud of him for that. Morals. Very excited. Yes. I'm very excited that he's decided to Thank be a you, sponsor Mike. of the mom game. Yeah. So here we are. Here we are. Cheers, Jules. Cheers. New M. sponsor, new year. <laughs> new year. It is 2021. Oh. Woo! We survived. We survived. You survived. We survived 2020. We did. You, you survived, survived the Rona. I survived the Rona. You survived two family members with the Rona. Yeah. The Rona um, did not spare us in our households at all. It did not. Maybe it's because you laughed in its face a while ago. <laughs> I didn't laugh in its face. I just <laughs> didn't take its face very seriously. And I have since retracted on that. I know. Quickly and bigly. I think a lot of people were, and bigly, are you Donald Trump? Yes. Um, I think a lot of people laughed in its face, so that's no. okay. But I, it's but how are you just, feeling about the crazy. new year? Like, the new year. You know what? Don't you I feel, feel like, like it's a really good time, and I'm sorry that you don't have them, but it's a really good time to go into the year with antibodies. <laughs> you know? Oh, listen, I'm jealous of your antibodies. <laughs> like, it is a new year. It is a new me. I mean, don't you want to, like... I'm invincible. Yes. Sneeze on me, bitches. <laughs> Knees on me, bitches. Are you serious right now? Someone's going to get mad at me about what is. 
Oh, so okay. Please good. don't sneeze. No, on don't. No, everyone keep but, your but out, but keep <laughs> outside your of the antibodies. No, you're right. It is. It feels good. It feels good to just like. It's just nice to be a fresh start. Just you know? a fresh start. I don't feel like I'm changing anything. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm really changing anything. Like Mike's, like my husband is like, you want to do dry January? I was like, oh my god, no, not thought no, about that for a split second. No, no, I don't. No, I mean, I, I'm, I, you know, glass or two at night. I was like, honey, it's just gonna happen. You know but what? if you, he was yeah. like, it would be really good. I think for the both of us, I'm like, it would be really good for you. That's great. He's doing some <laughs> kind of juice. It would be really good for He's, you. Yeah, I'm like, if that's what you want to do, great. Um, he's doing a little juice cleanse thing and I'm going to do one next week because yeah. I'm going out of town You're and I'm, a juice trying to, I'm going to try to tighten this game up as much as I can. Uh-huh. But yeah, I feel like it's, you know, some people go overboard and if that's your thing, get after it. If you feel like you can, you know, do all the things different in a new year, then that's kick ass. It's a good, good time to just stop and reassess. Yeah. But I don't know why everything like New Year's resol- resolution and weight lossy, why does it all say you have to quit drinking? I know. Like, why is, why does January say it has to be dry? I don't know. I mean, I think it is a good thing to attempt and and you want to know if you can. Well, yeah, I, mean, I had two babies. I did dry January for 18 months. No kidding. Come on. We did like almost two dry years. Yeah. I mean, I, I would have an occasional glass every now and then. Yeah, but towards I mean, the end. By and large. Yeah, you know, toughen them up a was bit. Pretty, I was pretty dry <laughs> there for <laughs> Me too. 18 and months. And you know what? T- today is Tuesday, and I for- totally forgot. I was going to try to not drink on the weekdays, but mm. I knew the first time someone was like, here's a glass, I'd be like, okay. okay. And that was the extent of it. And here's my deal. I don't, and uh, you know, and, I don't know. I just don't feel the need to do that. Now, if I was drinking a bottle a night... If we were getting into that second oh, exactly. bottle, then I'd be like, it's time to scale right. it back. And I'm not going to lie. There was a time during quarantine, COVID yeah. times where it was like pushing that. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. When we couldn't go anywhere, I was like, what? Anyway. What else are you supposed to do? Right. But n- how do we n- get our kids? Now I'm like <laughs> one to two glasses a night. I feel like for me is that's my moderation. And, I, you know, set, call me whatever. I, that's just that's my thing. For me, it's not about it's not like I'm getting hammered and getting right. a, for me, it's about, we've talked about this a million times. It's about the experience. It's about the fact that I've made it through that day and yep. this is my reward. And, and it really it. does like loosen you up. A bit. It does. And it relaxes me and it does. It helps me to sleep. And then I, you know, and people go, people are gonna be like, she's crazy. And then, you know, and then I get up early and I run. And that's and how I, you know you're fine. That's just my. The couple of times where I've like wondered like, okay, do I just need to like quit altogether? It's like, and it doesn't happen often, but it's just, if you wake up hungover, like on Ugh. a Saturday and you've got to take care of kids. That's the only time where I sit there and I'm like, what have I done to myself? Why? And I look at, and I do this every time I look at my kids and I'm like, I'm so jealous of your fresh little head right now. You've never had a sip of this booze that just makes you feel so bad. And then I'm like, am I a bad mom? Because I should not be hungover, like taking care of my kids. That's the only time that I'm like, I think about it and I'm, yeah. I'm like, should I just really try and stop? And then I'm like, no, that's well, it, and, but I think that too, that we've already given you, them enough. We gave them, we gave life. up our lives for them, exactly. but you know, I think it's too, but it, that makes you put it, it does make you, you know, not be so frivolous with it or where we were when we were younger. I mean, oh, yeah. let's just be real. We can't get away with shit. We used to get away with as no. far as like part bouncing back, partying, which by the way, do you see the flack that I caught on Twitter on New Year's Eve? <laughs> what do you mean? Because I tweeted, yeah, can't wait to hit the club yeah. tonight. I oh. said, I can't wait to join you. Uh-huh. I and saw you getting praised and, and uh, people were some, laughing. And then some were like this. Did they think you were serious? The, the, okay. This is why we can't stop. Did the you spread. mute them? No, get them out I, of your life. Get no. them out of your life as fast but as you I like, can. Do you? Really this is why we can't stop the spread. Because I'm going to hit the club like you hitting the damn hit the club. club all the time, Emily. So I can't I, get you out of the club. I know. I'm all up in the club all the I time. I loved that tweet. It was so, funny. Anyway. Yeah, Cause I it mean, was new year's Eve was like, what? A, oh my gosh. We played like four games of clue, uh, had a like mini dance party on the, in the living room. And I was in us bed too. at nine 15. Yep. Us too. All up in the club. Did you find the YouTube like kids countdown? No. Did you do that? I thought no. maybe that's what your dance party was. No. There oh, was no, this just dance. Oh, okay. Cause there was this like kids. New Year's Eve countdown that someone sent me on YouTube and it was such a hit. It was so cute. My kids loved it. They were laughing, like scream you laughing. Have shared it with dancing. everyone. I know I should have. What's wrong with you? I don't know. But if you find something is, great, share it with us. Okay. 
the thing is, is that kids like they're kind of dumb. So like they don't <laughs> so they don't know that it's not New Year's anymore. So you can still do it. Oh, so I'll let's share it. Pretend yeah. once we once we put this episode out, okay. I will accompany it with that link because my kids did it yesterday. They didn't care that it wasn't oh. New Year's like they just want to do it all the time. It's just it's all their favorite characters dancing to like all the hits. All the hits from TikTok <laughs> over the last year. Awesome. Um, so it was really fun. That's what we did. I mean, yeah, it was a, sh- it was a, I don't know. I'm, t- I'm kind of torn because I do love to like get dressed up and go out. Mm, but at the same time, years. at the same time, it was kind of nice to not even have the option because eh, it's yeah. a headache. I don't even know the last time I stayed up till midnight. Are you serious? I was up till almost two. The, on New Year's? Yeah. Oh my. I don't. Uh, I mean, at my house, but yeah. I don't remember. Like, I don't. It's eleven o'clock, and I there's no prayer. Now, I will say when I'm not working. Like, yeah. if, if the Rangers are playing and they that have a West Coast count. game, that doesn't count. But I'm talking about like willfully being yeah. awake. Yeah. Past eleven. I mean, eleven thirty is like. Well, and that, that's normally how I am. But my parents finally were able to come in town because yeah. they weren't for Christmas because of the COVID. Um, and so they, they were here only for a few nights and new year's Eve, we did like our Christmas and new year's all combined. So I just felt like I needed to take advantage of, of the few nights we all had together. Yeah. My aunt and uncle and my one cousin who flew in from DC. So it was just our like small group. And we, I mean, as you're, as an adult, you stay up late and you sit on the couch and talk oh, yeah. <laughs> like that's all we did, yeah. you know? So it was fun. It was a good new year's and, um, I am. I am trying to like get my booty in gear with yeah. just like working out more and eating healthier. And yeah. And I don't have any New Year's resolutions. I'm like, yeah. my thing is like, just keep going. Like, just keep going. Like, just <laughs> don't stop. Like, <laughs> just don't stop. Don't look too far back. <laughs> don't look too far ahead. Just keep going. Yeah. Like, just, well, you go hard. I think. Well, I mean, I'm just trying to You're just keep it. going. I'm just yeah. trying to keep going. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I don't have any fitness goals. I, I'm going to keep, I want to keep well, doing what I've yeah. been doing. I don't have any eating I feel like goals. you've found a good routine where you I don't feel necessarily like, need to do like a big diet or whatever. Right. You're and doing I'm, well. Right. I'm not, well, I'm not saying, but I, I just don't feel the need to, if I felt the need to, like I had a, a lunch with a girlfriend today uh-huh. and she's doing, you know, no dry January trying to eat better, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I just don't feel good. Yeah. And I'm like, if you don't feel good, right. then yeah, something needs to change. Yeah. Um, I'm there. Yeah. I'm that yeah. I feel like if you don't feel, if you don't feel right, something needs to change. Yeah. But like, if you don't feel like, if you feel like you just need to do something just for the sake of having a new year's resolution or some shit like that, but it, there's oh, no way yeah. to do that. If you, but if you if don't cruising, feel good and if, if you're you on feel, cruise control, if you're, just stick with I, don't, it. I wouldn't necessarily call my you cruise are. control, but I'm just fine with, I'm just fine with where I'm at. And yeah. that's why I, my only news resolution is to just keep going. And I like that to speak more Spanish. Okay. So I took this course, online course, like 150 hours to off, not this past off season, but off season before last. And I completed it with the perfect timing of going into the clubhouse to spend an entire season in the clubhouse. I was going to work on that Spanish mm-hmm. with the guys in the clubhouse. And then I didn't get to be in there. And so my, it, it just totally, not, it was, it wasn't wasted. I still have a lot of that knowledge, but if you don't practice it, you're never going to Right. Learn it. Well, you're going on a field trip. And so now I'm going, field trip. yes, I am going on a field trip to practice my, my Spanish. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's <laughs> you write what, that off. That's like- my, exactly. My small, <laughs> my small, I guess, New Year's resolution is to speak more Spanish, to take what I've learned and hopefully put it to use at some point. Yeah. Because it is very useful to have here in Texas. I took it in yes. college and I don't remember much of it, but when I go to yeah. Mexico, Oh, you bet. So I think I'm fluent. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, I just start spitting out like all this stuff. That probably makes no por sense. Favor. Yes. And with, we went to Mexico quite a few times with Kelly's family. They have a place in Cabo and, um, oh, fancy. Well, it's like, a, I mean, it's like a little condo and Who it's cares? outside of Cabo, but I, Whatever. when you say they have a place in Cabo, it sounds hey. a lot cooler. Um, and they thought like, cause I was from Texas and they had no idea what I was saying. They're like, wow, Kelly, this is so impressive. Your girlfriend is fluent in Spanish. She's so Texan. Uh, And I'm just over there, like probably making no sense. That's the best though. But you have to know uno mas gratis corona por favor. See, there you go. Remember that. Yeah. Um, okay. Well that was fun. That was fun. New year's 2021. It's here. Good things ahead. Yes. Um, let's do a little sports squirts in sports squirts, some sports squirts for you today. So cowboy season is over. Can oh I be gosh. like really excited? It's over. I'm really excited. I know. Cause at your job, they're talking about it ad nauseum. It's like such a beat a down. Lot. Yeah, it is a beat down. Um, and they're not good and they're not good. And I didn't want good. them to get to the playoffs. Cause then you have that like false sense of like, well, you can be shitty and still make the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, and no, no one from the NFC East should have made the playoffs. No one from the NFC East should have made no. the playoffs. You're exactly right. The NFC East was a gong show. Yeah. 
It's all, it's the whole, cowboys are always so drama-y. There's always some shit going on. Well, and- It's and, like you've got the Kellen Moore stuff. You had the, you know- Right. It's, he's going. No, he's not going. Now he's here for three years. Is he, he's, is he the heir apparent to McCarthy? Is McCarthy going to call the plays? It's like, oh my gosh. And you wonder, like, what came first, the chicken or the egg kind of thing? Are the cowboys always drama because they have interesting things happening to them? Or are the cowboys always drama because- the Dallas media makes them drama. Oh, I think it's you know? definitely a vicious cycle. Yeah. Yeah. So like the Kellen Moore thing, it's like, okay, cool. A, a dude interviewed for a job. Um, but that became a big deal. And, and is Mike Nolan going to get fired? That's yeah. the big thing. Cause we already know Mike McCarthy's coming back, which is just, I don't, I don't, I'm, I haven't bought into him. Yeah. So barn. it's like, well now you've handcuffed yourself with this contract and you have to bring him back. Yeah. But yeah, the barn and his whole identity, he seems quite overwhelmed oftentimes with um, game management. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my, my nine-year-old was like, you've got to challenge that. What are you doing? I know. I know. And, like, and it was know, a, game, a game-changing a game play against the Giants in a game that you have to win to have a shot to go to the playoffs. It doesn't make any sense. I don't understand how you don't throw a flag when it looks like someone doesn't catch a ball. And don't you wonder, like... With these guys, and listen, I know these are like high pressure situations. Yeah. But don't you wonder, like, when literally everyone on the planet at home is screaming it, why you, as the dude in charge, right. is not seeing the same thing? Right. And I get that they don't have the same angles. I get that they don't. If you saw one replay on a big screen on a jumbotron in a in a stadium, you're, you're challenging that. Mm -hmm. And that's what doesn't make sense. And it then he was saying sense. he valued his timeouts. Well, guess what? You finished the game with a timeout in your pocket that you didn't even use. And you had three. It wasn't your last one. Exactly. And it's funny. It's 10 yards and it put him within a reasonable field goal range. Oh it yeah. That, doesn't make that sense. could have changed the game right mm -hmm. there. Um, it's funny because I was watching with Kelly and obviously my husband does, um, that's type yeah, of thing. Where's he Kelly reviews Forbes these situations. Um, for the stars, that's what he does. And we were both just looking at each other like, how how does that happen? Because there's it should be somebody's job to watch yeah. for those specific times in the game and make sure that your head coach doesn't F up. Okay, so that's is, there, is there a fraternity? Is there a, a, a Kelly Forbes video replay video coach fraternity? that There is in the NHL. They all talk to each other. Okay. Um, but Do they he, dabble in, like, do they reach out? Are they interconnected with another sport? I don't sports? think so, unless you would, like, have some sort of connection with somebody. Like, Already. Kelly knew the guy from, I think it was the A's, because <clears throat> we had a mutual friend. So like he knew that guy and then he talked to him and he actually went to, I think when the A's were in town to play the Rangers, he went and watched and he sat in there, but he wouldn't have known him otherwise. And they don't really talk outside of their league because I think their roles are so different right. with each team. And it might be one guy, it might be a staff, it might be three guys. And one guy is like one of his many jobs is to watch for those types of things. So maybe that's why the guy for the Cowboys could have missed it. Or maybe he wasn't paying attention. It's like when Dan McDowell asked me some like random ass stat and I'm like, Bleh. I'm not ready for this. I don't know. I'm not paying attention. Like maybe it, that's what happened yeah. to him. But no offense, but you're not making like <laughs> really, really good money to do one little, I'm not, not one. I mean, <laughs> I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Maybe you should be more focused I'm, and play up to your contract. I, I, uh, maybe, maybe you should. Absolutely not making really uh, good money at all. Thanks for bringing it up. Babe. <laughs> you're gonna have a old, but I mean, I this. feel like there's a, there's a little more See if leeway. I can refinance one more time. <laughs> I feel like there's a little more leeway with you than maybe. Someone on an NFL coaching staff. There yeah. is. But I was just using yes. that example as yeah. if you're when you're caught, like not saying he wouldn't be paying attention, but maybe he didn't have like an answer. Heightened sense. Okay. Be, yeah. Where the coach, I, I mean, the coach calls you and they're like, what do you think? And if he didn't know, or if he stutters right. or if he's like, I'm not hundred percent sure, then coach McCarthy doesn't have the balls to do it, which is the problem. Therein right. lies the problem. You should, if you're the head coach, you should throw just that flag. Just say, yeah. You People should be holding your arms back from throwing the flag in that situation. Yeah. If that's like one of your only, if you've got to send out a prayer to try and get a chance yeah. to go down and score, but well, thankfully for us, yes, mercifully, the season is over. Mercifully, mercifully. the season is over. That yeah. team didn't and it, deserve and you know to what? do anything. And kudos to the NFL. I mean, granted, Super Wild Card Weekend has not started yet. That's what we're about to talk about. Um, however, they made it through the regular season. No bubble. There was some postponements. But 
They made it through. They so made it cu- through. Kudos to them. It's because the NFL just throws the people with COVID out on the curb and says, <laughs> you keep like, playing. Yep, we're I playing. don't care if you don't have a quarterback, Denver Broncos, you're going to do this shit and you're going to find someone who can throw the ball and you're right. going to play. But anyways, okay, they did survive. So we thought it'd be fun to do some picks for Super Wild Card Weekend. Super Wild Card Weekend. And I don't have the schedule pulled up, but you do. Okay, yes, <clears throat> I have it. So starting with the NFC, and I'm going to preface this with like, I haven't been watching all of these teams and this is, we're just going to have some fun with it. Okay. Um, the Saints versus the Bears. This game is Sunday afternoon. And moms who are watching who may not be paying attention, just know that your husband's going to be glued to the TV all weekend, even if the Cowboys aren't in the playoffs, because that's what husbands do. Um, the, let's see. Saints versus Bears. This one's on Sunday at 3.30-ish. And this one, Emily, is the one that they're also doing like a Nickelodeon game of. Did you hear about this? We talked about it on the ticket. So they're going to have the main broadcast. um, And then they're also going to have a Nickelodeon game. Um, I guess it's on Nickelodeon. Yeah. And so on that version of the game, they're going to have like slime coming down. And some of the players are going to have googly eyes shooting out. Like if they catch a pass in the end zone, all of a sudden... It's, but, so it's the actual game, but they're doing crazy, whacked out yes. kid stuff. Yes, because they're trying to draw in like a younger audience. Okay, I like <clears> it. I said I was fine with it. I was like, if that'll keep, I might actually watch that one over the real one if it keeps like my children sitting on the couch and focused on something. Yeah, I'm So in. I can watch football. Um, so anyway, that one. Okay, so we have the Saints and we have the Bears. I mean, is anybody going to? I'll take the Bears. Okay. I'll take them. Look at you. No, I mean, you're I'm just, so ballsy. Yeah, so ballsy. Um, I'm not. I'm picking the Saints in okay. that game. The Saints 12 and 4, the Bears 8 and 8. Mm. Anyways, um, Seahawks versus the Los Angeles Rams. That game also around 3 30 on Saturday Seahawks. on Fox. Seahawks. Uh, okay, well, I was going to pick the Seahawks too. It's hard to bet against Russell Wilson in the first round. Um, Washington football team. <laughs> What are you even doing there versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I mean, not like they're Tom Brady, I guess. Yeah. But Tom I would Brady love to versus see, like half of Alex Smith. I would love to see Alex <laughs> that, Smith do that mean? something. No, um, well, kind of. But. <laughs> well, I, I say that because I actually like read a report today that he might not even be able to play the whole game. Like they might be rotating their quarterbacks because yeah. of his injury situation. I think Tom Brady will. You have to think he's going to rise to For the sure. occasion in the playoffs. Yeah. Okay, so the only one we disagreed is you went with the Bears. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to take notes of all of this. Yes, because I figure we have to be different. We disagree. Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, I I took one for the okay, team. Okay, well, the AFC, I, I don't even, whatever. I can disagree with you on all of these probably. Okay. Um, so the Bills versus the Colts. That I think game the Bills are so dangerous. an early game dangerous. on Saturday. Bills. Okay, I'm going Colts. Okay. There you go. Look at us disagreeing. Um, all right, then the night game on Sunday, we have the Steelers versus the Browns. Can I pick the Browns? You can. Okay. Even though they're, they got the Rona. Yeah, they got the Rona. Yeah. But they're going to be like, you know, my sleeper pick. Okay. All right. I'll take Big Ben. You're going to take Big Ben. That's <laughs> probably a good decision. Big Ben versus Baker. How, what's the age difference there? Like 20 28 years? years. Oh, my God. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we have the Titans versus the Ravens. Sunday early game one Titans or and five. Ravens. Let me be Nuno five. really honest here. Nuno I know five. very little about either of these two teams, Titans and Ravens. Uh, Ravens, you got Lamar Jackson. He obviously, oh yeah, he's fun. He's a post coviter as well. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see, but he's he's a good quarterback. Okay, he's you put, you pick first. Experience. I'll take the other one. Okay, despite all of what I just said, I'm going to go Titans. Okay. I'll go Ravens. I think they're Ryan Tannehill these days. Okay. Um, and I know they they had a big win to make it into the playoffs. And so I'm a believer in momentum. So I think that might help them. Does momentum really exist? I think it does. Okay, good. I think it's it good does. to know. Um, okay, speaking of momentum, mm-hmm. the NHL. The NHL. Has momentum. The NHL has momentum. And you know how has momentum is the Dallas effing stars? Because they went all the way to the Stanley Cup final. They did. In their last season. Um, they just started. And their- they had, what, a good two, three week break before they <laughs> got back it at it? feels like. Um, yeah, they just started their training camp this week in Frisco. So they had day two of training camp today. Their first game is going to be January 14th. The stars will start on the road and they're gone for a week. Okay. Um, but I'm really excited to see how this thing shakes out. It's hard to say, um, 
they went to the Stanley Cup final, they're going to be there again. It's because it's yeah, not easy. That's hard. It's it's hard. We're missing Vin Bishop to start the season. We're missing our friend Tyler Sagan to start the season. He's going to be out all the way until like March um, after having surgery. Anton Hudobin, the Stars backup goaltender who became the starting goaltender when Ben Bishop was going hurt. Home. He says, we're not going home. We should try to have him on here. He's fun. I would totally take okay, that. I'll work on it um, because he, well, he's not even in town yet. So he's, he's had some issues with immigration and with quarantine and health Ugh. stuff, the, the, all the things you have to get through in order to cross the border, blah, 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 blah. Um, <clears throat> So he's not here yet, but we'll see if he's here for when the stars start their season. But it'll be a lot of fun to watch them this season. Yeah. I feel like they have the attention of people in Dallas. Yeah, for and sure. We'll see if they can hold that attention. Yeah. Um, after what they were able to do in the bubble. Um, <clears throat> so that is all started up. And next week, we'll, they'll be getting so ready when, for their as first the game. the NFL winds down, then we'll have the NHL to step in. We've mm -hmm. already got the NBA going, which I'm having a hard time getting into, which is really strange Yeah, because I was, I, I was all in on Luca and the Mavs, right. but I don't know why it's taken me a while to get, well, it's taking them a while to start. Maybe playing that's well. why are you, it's when you look while. at the NBA, are you a Mavs only watcher or will you put on uh, an NBA game just to have it on? It depends. It depends on. So I'll watch like the bucks. I'll yeah. watch the star players, but I watch not, the Lakers. Like I don't even want to watch the Lakers. I, they make me nauseous. Me too. You know, and they're good and congrats, but it's just that the Lakers fans, when they, when now that they're good again, are like, oh, we've been here all along. Yeah. It's like, wait, wait, where were you? Where were you a few years ago when this thing was sucking at ass? They like, were like trying to be Golden State that, Warriors fans. Right. <laughs> and so I don't know. It's just, I mean, it's kind of like the, it's like the Yankees. Like, it's like, you know. Yeah. When you're when you've never been a fan of the dynasty team or the really great team, you know, I mean, it's you know, the Yankees, the Lakers that, you know, I guess. Uh, can it be the Cowboys anymore? It's got to be the Patriots now. I, I, I mean, the think Cowboys it can be for the, the love. Cowboys anymore. No but it's like to watch those, that. the you know, those teams and it, that have so many bandwagon fans. Yeah. But I'm just like, Ech, so I know. gross. Like, are there any teams that are really like perennial, perennially, perennially, perennially good? that you don't hate them, you know? Um, like in all How sports, would you qualify perennially? Just consistently, like in the top tier of their league, consistently going to the postseason, maybe not winning the championship. But, you know, it seems like you always end up just hating them. And I don't like that because I want to think that you can have a team that is perennially good and likable. Yeah. But you, And do I I'm just hate them all because one. they're so good and I'm yep, jealous? Yep, that's that, self-admittedly. Like, right right here, front and center. Right. Like, I went to Texas Tech. Like, we <laughs> it's a hard time winning anything. Like, yeah. so stepchild mentality runs pretty deep here. It runs here. deep. Um, but, yeah, and, you know, Rangers fan. Like, know. you know, I mean, Have I still ever, feel like, like when I think about our runs, I'm like, remember we just went to the World Series? I know, that was 10 so years ago. Fun. Was that 10 years ago? It was 10. I remember it like it was yesterday. 10 years ago. And so it's like we had that Jeez. little taste and it was so fun. It was so fun. And yeah, but no, I can't think of any. Like if I'm thinking about recent memory in baseball, like maybe the Rays, but I don't, that way you wouldn't, that's not perennial. That's not perennial. Same way with like the A's. They were and the A's in our, a division and they're not, they're not hateable. I mean, for fuck's sake, they have like, so their, their payroll's like $35. Oh yeah, like, money ball. That's the whole you know, thing. Right. Yeah. But also too, that, I think that made people, that made me not like them as much. The Moneyball thing. Really? Because I didn't because feel like it, it was- a movie and it was no, like publicized? No, because I thought it wasn't an accurate depiction of the way shit really went down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I thought it was glamorized for, and I'm sure it was. And yeah. I don't know. It's not like I know shit, but- I, that's You just, do that, know shit. That was just my assumption. So no, I can't think of one, but I would love for someone to help us to tell think us of one. If you can think of a team that Boise is, State? <laughs> they're not perennially oh, good. I, I mean, they're I'm like- I'm just trying. They're, I don't they're, know. They're, but no, you might be onto something there because they have been good lately and no one really hates them. I mean, if you hate They've Boise State- They've been good State, for a while. You've yeah. got issues. Like, they have but they're not playing for a national football title. football field. They, have, they do you have can't a blue hate football them. field. It's hard to hate that. Um- Okay, so real quick, back to Mavs and Luca. So the uh, hot topic, like right now with uh, the Mavs, and it was it was just funny today. Someone did not start their New Year's resolution soon enough. Oh, cutting ooh, back on this. Oh no, oh, I don't care. I'm just saying people are judgy. not people. I heard it this morning 
on a certain DFW sports radio <laughs> I know, station. And then it kind of like ran throughout Snowball. the day where we all had to and talk about it. And then everyone was like defensive. Like, don't you talk about my Luca like that. Well, like, that's kind of the deal. Like, and that's what oh. the, the musers were saying this morning is like, no one can say anything bad about Luca. Uh-huh. Okay. So he came back from the break, which was short. It was a short break right? and they didn't know when their season was even going to start. And then all of a sudden it was like, bam, the season's mm-hmm. back, like probably at least a month earlier than they thought. And Luca, our friend who, our best, our dear friend here on the ticket who. I mean, it's like Dirk the and ticket, then Luca. Excuse me, the mom game. Yeah, Dirk um, and then Luca. Dirk and then Luca, both of our best friends who are just like texting you all the time, trying to get on the Always. show. I mean, Luca is like knocking on my door at night. He's like, when can I, I, I be lo- on the mom game? Dude, my pu- our public <laughs> pleas to get Dirk on the show are totally shameless. I, I'm con- I don't think he's on Twitter right now. That's all I can say. It's because I'm sad busy. that he's not responding to us. I mean, he's busy with dad stuff, but if you were like bogged down in dad stuff, wouldn't you want to go sit right here and have some wine can with us imagine? and chat? Can have an imagine? excuse to leave? Oh, he, the, the, he was so excited to be done with media obligations when he retired. The last thing he wants to do is fucking talk to us. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm we're holding gonna, out hope. It, yeah, it doesn't mean we're going to stop trying. I think he will resurface. At some point he will. I mean, he did retweet us that one time. <laughs> Did he? Oh, he, he replied or, or he something? did something. He followed us. <laughs> like a so follow shameless. is not a retweet. Well, does he follow our podcast? I, he follows it. He doesn't listen to the show. Well, I know, but just the fact that he follows it, like surely he, he saw when we tagged him in our forty first episode that was dedicated to him. Dedicated had a graphic that Adam made and everything. <laughs> Okay, we're getting off the subject. Luca so, is pudgy. <laughs> Luca's pudgy. Is he really? Has anybody seen? Have you seen him without a shirt on? Well, no. Well, I mean, well, okay. So I'm why married. are we saying? <laughs> oh Lord, <laughs> that's the dumbest I, thing you've ever I said. I know it is. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, people are killing him. Well, but like, can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? And this is this sounds really t- terrible. I'm kind of glad that a dude is getting getting critiqued body on his shamed. body. Be, and I'm not, and that sounds, ter- that is so petty of me. That's okay. But I don't care. I'm petty sometimes. And <laughs> when you're, when you're on TV and people are fucking crushing you on a daily basis about what you're wearing, what your hair looks yeah. like, what your legs look like, you, your, what a, everything. All this stuff, and you feel like that dudes never get it and they it's totally true. skate. It's true. And is that, I'm sorry, Luca. I, and I know you're listening. <laughs> Course. I'm so sorry. He's our biggest. But misery loves company, I guess. I don't know. There's just something about it that's like, God, ah, fine. Okay. You know, it's not just chicks. No, I mean, we'll chicks know, get it all the time. We'll know we've really made waves when somebody that's not an athlete, that's a dude, is getting body <laughs> right. shaped. Like a reporter, because, heaven forbid. Right. Because I, Lord knows I'm not, you know, I, in my right. physical and condition people is are body shaming yeah. him or whatever, talking about his weight and his appearance because it directly affects their favorite team or how he plays. If someone's just doing that to you because you happen to like pop up and tell us about the Ranger game, that's where like the big disconnect is. I know. Also, too, though, disclaimer, it's part of the gig. I totally I know, get it. And I knew can, it you going still in. Have feelings. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. It's, yeah. I fully accept it. And it's part of the gig. And I totally get that. Um, and I knew it going in. Yeah. I didn't know quite what it would be like, but whatevs. But whatevs. Um, but yeah, I think we just both said whatevs. We did. I said it because you said it. Yeah, it's kind of cheesy, but should okay. we backtrack we that? Can we cut, can edit dump that, that out? Edit that out. <laughs> um, but no, I'm not worried about Luca. I'm like, he, no. the season kind of snuck up on him and he was enjoying himself and he's going to bounce back. Obviously he had a triple double last night. They beat the Rockets. Um, and I think he looks great. Um, but I will say this is what, and this is what I've told. He's 21. So. Right. He's 21. And this is what I've told athletes that I've dealt with for, you know, whoever, for mm-hmm. all of my time in, in, in the media or whatever, is that you, you look at a guy like Luca and his, his people are, are standing up for him. Right. So yeah. they're like, don't mm, 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 careful. They criticize care all that kind of stuff. There, his leash is going to be longer than most guys. Uh-huh. One, because he's perhaps the most talented player in the NBA. Uh-huh. Um, second, because he's he's funny, he's engaging, he's entertaining, yeah. he's respectful, all those things. And it's like, I've, I've said this a million times, I've given this comp. When Elvis Andrews got his giant contract from the Rangers a few years back, he did not play well immediately after. And his leash was so long because Elvis has always treated us with respect, with kindness, 
Um, he's always worked works? hard. He's mm-hmm. always played the game the right way. He's always done his work. His results may not have been there, but he, the way he treated the media as humans and media people are human beings mm-hmm. and they have feelings and they are swayed by those kinds of things. So the leash that they had on him and the way that they would write articles and the way that we would say things about him would be skewed in a way that wasn't so harsh on him because we gave him a longer leash because we, right. it's human nature. Yep. Now, when you deal with, and I've said this a million times, the player that I had the most difficulty, one of the most difficult players I had covering was CJ Wilson. And he just, he made everything difficult and it was hard and he was condescending and he was, it, it just was, it was an unpleasant experience. And so when he did poorly, people wait. were ready oh, to yeah. pounce. I remember that. And it's just the way it is. And so people that say media members are unbiased and they're no bullshit. Yeah. Like that, your, your feelings and the You're way in people there every treat day. every that it factors into the way you vote for the hall of fame. It factors into the stories that you write. It factors into the things that you say in radio interviews. It, all of that factors in, it's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and in, unless you are void of feelings and emotions, you are no exception to that. There's nothing like having a career where you dedicate like your days to watching this person play and then going in and trying to get sound from them and then having them just brush you off. Like Uh, to them, it's like, I'm tired. I've played a game. I don't feel like talking. But to you, it's like I woke up this morning thinking about your game and I watched this whole game and I've got an article to write or I've got a report to do on TV or whatever it is. And that's why it's interesting. Oh my gosh. I cannot f- remember this guy's name. He basically retired after the last thing I remember about him. He had, he had a, I think it was like a boil on his ass and I'm not kidding. <laughs> and I, he was <laughs> super you, tall. An athlete? Yes. He played for the ass. Rangers. Yes. He had a, like a, like, on, how'd you see his ass? I didn't see it. It was like a medical diagnosis <laughs> for God's sake, Julie. No, so <laughs> Good Wait, Lord. I'm sorry. You're the one that said a boil on his ass. I've never heard that medical I, diagnosis. I, I'm pretty sure it was something a little more medically. <laughs> right, but you're oriented. the one who made me say. I did. I can't remember his this. name, and I can't remember the exact medical diagnosis. I just know it was <laughs> medical diagnosis, aka boil on his ass. <laughs> And he, I remember him telling me, and he was a not, he was not a hall of famer. He was not an everyday player. He had a spurt where he was like really good. And I remember he came in from the clubhouse one day and we wanted to interview him after the game. And he mm-hmm. said, my job ends when I leave that field. Oh, and I was like, Oh, okay. Oh, wow. And then when he got the boil, I was like, Good you're luck. like, you're tweeting out like, so-and-so is boiling his ass. Good, good luck with your boil. This, yes, he's going How's to miss seven to 10 games with an ass boil. With an, <laughs> you know, and that's, yeah. And it's not like I was, you know, I wasn't rooting against him, but, but like. But that was rude of him. It was extremely rude. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, well, we've got, you know, oh, here's Adrian Beltre, future Hall of Famer, going to stand at his locker, but right. you're above it. And, right. and that just, it, it, I, it, I remember thinking like, dude, and not wanting, I mean, I don't know. It just really, really, it really pisses you off. And it really too, though, the great thing about it is it makes you appreciate the guys who do it the right. Exactly. And I say, I hate the right way people. I hate when people say the right way, when people who are accommodating and who realize that that is part of their job. It tells you a lot about them as a person. Or who treat it, you know, dealing with the media as part of their job. And it, it it goes a long way with the media. I'll tell you that much. No, a hundred percent off myself. I mean, after covering Boil Hockey ass. for so long, it's the same thing. Boil ass. No, you you do. You. What is his name? I can't remember his name. He's tall as shit. He was. You said a pitcher? No. I can't even remember. I can't. I don't know why I can't You've remember. You've been there like so long. You're, so, you don't even remember people's names. So you're just long. like, I just know he was tall and he had a boil so, on his ass and he was so a jerk to me. I cannot even tell you how many players have been through there since I started. Oh my God. It's well, insanity. That's pretty awesome. Lots. That says a lot yeah, about you. Yeah. So, Staying anyway. power, my love. Okay, where are we? Where our, are we? We um, had our we had a rundown. You've got it did. in front of you. I do. Um, we talked about well, this segues into a little bit. I, I saw you like with some hot takes on Twitter oh dear. about the baseball hall of fame. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm just scrolling through and I'm like, do to do. I'm like looking at Instagram. I'm like, oh, Emily is hot right now. So I wanted to ask you about that. Okay. Okay, where did so you were tweeting about certain players not getting into the baseball yeah. hall of fame and who votes on that? So where did this come from? So I, I, first of all, I get, I get annoyed that baseball writers are the only people who are deciding who's in the hall of fame. I did not realize that. Yes. And so do I feel like, I mean, broadcasters, let's go. Mm-hmm. I'm, no, I'm talking about former players, yeah. former managers. Right. 
former coaches, guys who have actually competed with and against these guys who are up for the Hall of Fame. Um, I just feel like they should absolutely be part of the process. Mm -hmm. When I look at a guy like Eric Nadell, who has covered this game for damn near 40 years, there and seen so much and takes, I know how seriously he takes this job and how many, how much baseball he's seen and how many players he's seen and what a, what a steward of the game he is. He should absolutely have a hall of yeah. fame vote, but because he's not a he writer, doesn't. you know what I mean? And I'm not saying every Joe Schmo, I mean, and like, listen, I've got a friend who used to cover baseball and now is working at a, for in PR at a school district and he's got a hall of fame vote. And I'm like, Oh really? Yes. So it sticks with you. So yeah. So it's, he got it after he stopped covering baseball, wow. but it's like the process and all that kind of stuff. And you're still a member of the BBWAA, whatever. It's like the writer's right. yeah. version of the boys club. Yeah. So it's like the, right. It's like, and there's women in there and I, I'm th thankful. Thank God. I mean, not that whatever. I know what you're saying. Yes. I'm just saying that like, it's not all one type of person. Diversity. Yes. Right. But I'm just saying, I just don't think that writers should hold. I just don't think that that's the way it should be. And I think it should start with guys that are in the hall of fame. Oh, and yeah. then I think it should spill over into guys that have a certain amount of tenure in the game. If you played the game for 10, 15 years, I don't know what it is. And I don't know all the answers. I'm just saying it's got to be better than just that group. It's like a, almost like a lazy thing where that's how it started. And then no one's even like taking the time to reassess it no. and change the way it's just the something way it is. that is as huge as getting into the hall of fame, right? Just leaving it up to these writers. Yeah. I think there's nothing more valuable than when players vote on other players for yes. awards. And it's like when I can't, Michael Young one year got voted in, and you know, there's the way the uh, all-star balloting works is there's you know, fan vote and player manager selection yeah. and there's player vote. And yeah. I remember him always saying like, whenever he was voted in by his peers, that was the most, oh, honor, yeah. you know, that was the most, you know, um, right. prestigious thing to him was yeah. to be voted in by his peers. Yeah. And so I just can't imagine that, it, that, you know, guys who have played this game for a long time, guys who have managed for a long time, um, wouldn't take that so seriously as to consider those hall of fame considerations. I don't know. I just, I just think it's bullshit. And I yeah. think we've made all these, you know, strides with, you know, opening things up and changing the way we look at things. And I don't, I so haven't forbid this we little club of writers oh, with their hall of fame. Yeah. Boats. Yeah. I didn't even realize that's the way it worked. And, and now yeah. that I'm pr privy to that information. I, I and totally too, just for the record, you. I, you know, it now everybody gets into like the steroids era and all that kind of stuff. Like in my, I think Pete Rose should be in the hall of fame. Um, yes, he bet on baseball. He's been banned from baseball, whatever. He, he, I don't care. He didn't do it the right he, way. He didn't do it the right way. The dude was arguably one of the best players to ever play the game. And he's not in the hall of fame. And last I checked, it was, I mean, where are we moral and background checks? Because you should look at some of the guys of, already in there. A lot of you know what I mean? It's just like, there's a lot regard. of, it's, yeah. it's real conflicting to me. Yeah. And so no, that makes sense. And I now love that you brought some light to it. And it's now just, that they're voting on all the, you know, the steroid era guys, you know, and it's like, so which ones do you believe the ones mm -hmm. that were actually busted or the ones that, you know, admitted or, or is it the ones that the were ones nice that were them? right. I mean, you look you at never Andy know. Pettit. Andy Pettit came out and said, "I did it one time, and then it was for this, and then it, and then it went away." And every he's a great guy, and then you know, but in you know, it it's just a slippery slope. And where do you draw the lines? And anyway, something that definitely seems like it should be reassessed. That just doesn't for sure. make much sense. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, so. We killed it on sports sports today. That was a lot of sports. A lot of sports. A lot of sports. We did talk some New Year's thing. resolutions. We talked some New Year's resolutions. Your Black kids, thereof. Your, yeah, you have none. Yours is to just keep going, which mm -hmm. I love. Mm -hmm. um, your kid's going back to school this week. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Praise God. How about you? Yeah, mine started back um, today. They had the random Monday off when yeah. I went back to work and they didn't. So I had to like, I, I had a like 14 year old neighbor watch them because yeah. I was like, I got to figure something out. But yeah, oh my gosh, getting back into the morning routine and going no. back to school. I love that they're back to school, but I work. So it's not like I'm like, Oh, thank God I can sit around and put my feet up all day. Like right. I'm going to work, but the morning routine is hectic. Yeah. And, uh, and Kelly's gone now. So he was doing it for a couple of months, which was so amazing. And he was taking them every morning to school so I could like sit there, have my coffee, like get myself ready and go to work. But now it's like, I mean, just this morning, it's like all the random little things that, that you have to deal with as you're trying to just get them out the door with kids our age. Like Anna last night, she started playing in the fire 
Ugh. Not the fire wasn't on. Sorry. <laughs> She started playing in the fireplace. The ashes? <laughs> the ashes. Oh, like hell. I was looking. Okay, we got an Alexa. So I was over there playing with Ryder in the Alexa because he thinks it's like the most fun to yeah. tell Alexa what to do. Um, and so we're over playing with Alexa. And then Kelly's like, Julie. He's like, Anna's in the fireplace. And I go look at her and she's got ashes all over her oh, no. face. Um, luckily, not in her eyes or anything. So I gave them good baths because they were going back to school. And I want my kids to be clean when they go back to school. A good goal. Yeah, we don't bathe every night. Oh, I you mean, don't. No. Oh, yeah, we shower. But the older they get, the more you will do that. Yeah, we. And mine are seven and nine. Like Henry's flat out gamey. Like it's it's. He's it's, like sweating. Oh. Yeah. 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 See, mine are little, and like sometimes they don't like leave the house all yeah. day. So I'm like, eh. but I bathed them last night. I was like, my kids are not, are gonna smell good when they go to school. And I like scrubbed her face. I thought I scrubbed her face. So this morning we're like getting ready to go, and it's you know all the little battles about getting dressed and this and that. And I'm putting her hair up. I'm like, you got to look cute. Excuse me on my first day or on her first day. And I look at her and she's got like all this black, like Under fire, underneath her fireplace eyes. ash Stop still it. on her face. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh my God, if it's not one thing, it's another. another. Yeah. And then she wanted a certain lunchbox. She got a lunchbox for Christmas, but you can't bring that lunchbox to school because it's not school approved. And then yeah. I had to like fight that battle. And then Ryder's not ready to go. Oh my God. It's just, Okay, so, so one hard. one thing that changed our our lives. Yeah, tell have me. Have you how old are you? They're, Five and two. Okay, so they're still early. At about four. Okay, it, Ryder can start. We start our kids at probably seven and five, maybe six and four. Shower. Mm-hmm. You go shower. Oh, Anna, sh- they shower. Shower by themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I have to observe them. Right. But they shower. They do shower. Okay, that's a game changer. Yeah. Well, you're early on it then. Well, it's because Ryder was starting to shower. And yeah. it's because when we redid our bathroom, we didn't put a bathtub in there. There's yeah. one upstairs. But the shower's right there. And so it's almost shower. easier. But showering, they shower together. It's a, okay. In that our won't bi- last much longer. In our longer, big bathroom. Yeah. I know. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you a real quick Ryder? Sure. Ryder story. Do tell. About some of the goofy things he says. Because I felt like this went in line with what we talked about when we had the lady from the birds and the bees on. So I don't know who he's been talking to or whatever, but, and I want to know, and or do it's you a weird question. Okay. What do you feel about like showering or stripping down in front of your kids? So <laughs> I, this is a good question because I'm not extremely modest. Uh-huh. Um, and so <laughs> Once they start to notice, so once my kids started to notice body parts, yeah, it really game over. What, Same. Do you remember yeah. what age? Because I feel like I could be getting there. And uh, I, yeah. Oh no, it, this was a while back. It's just one more thing to worry about. I wrote it down because it was so funny. <laughs> but the, when they say like, you know, what are what is that or why is that there? Yeah. What you know, it's you. And then it, do you just cut the other one off if they're there oh, tagging yeah. along oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. as well? No, it's, it's just all, we're all done. Yeah, we're all done. We, it's we, hard that, though. that was, yeah, that was a few years ago where it was like, okay, you, yeah. it's not okay yeah. for. Well, like Ryder could, he could have cared less up right. until the other day. And then you'll notice they start looking at things <laughs> and then you're like, why are you looking at these so I was and getting, that? Yeah. And I was getting ready for the shower the other day and they were just in their plane. Um, and Ryder looked at me and he said, Mom, he said, I just want you to know I'm only looking at you. I'm only looking at your face. I'm not looking at your other parts. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> he was totally looking at your other parts. I don't looking. think he was. He, Julie. But I think someone has just turned him on to like the fact that there are other, other parts, parts and that you shouldn't be looking at them. He, and so he was wanting me to know. He's like, I'm just looking at your face. <laughs> like... That, yes. We need to teach every man to use that line. That is good. I'm like, only- <laughs> like use that at the bar and see where it gets you. Hi, I'm Adam. I'm only looking at your face, not your other parts. <laughs> would you get slapped? <laughs> like, would- Can I buy you a drink? <laughs> I want to know what's your pickup line. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. That's so funny. And then this morning, I was, I'm <clears throat> like I said, New Year's resolution, I'm trying to like, Sometimes if I don't get my workout in in the morning, it doesn't happen, but it's got to be so early. So early. Anyway, so I'm trying to do um, pure bar or not even pure bar, but bar on Peloton because I can do it like I put it on my phone and I was like, okay, I'm going to get up before they get up. And the writer walks in and I'm sitting there doing the spar class and he's like, what are you doing? I'm like trying to exercise. And I showed him, I was like, I'm trying to get rid of this. Like showed him like a little bit of my tummy and he's like, is that getting bigger? (laughs) Stop it. And then he said, you have have another baby in there? Uh Uh-uh. Granted, like, I don't, I think it's just because he's just learning about babies. No, he's like, yeah. So, 
Yeah. And then he said, is Anna going to have babies in her tummy someday? And then reminded me that he still wants to marry her. Oh. So anyway, I'm like, these kids, I just feel like he's ripe at this age where like the things he says, just no filter. None. None. I am not looking. I know. At your other parts. I'm just looking at your face. Just looking at your face, mom. I just want you to know. (laughs) That one like killed me. (laughs) Yeah. I'm so glad you wrote it down. You should write these things down. I started writing them down. Yeah. I hope Twitter never goes away because I'll lose all my shit. Cause I put, whenever my kids <laughs> yes, say Henry something, I just like put stuff out there. <laughs> oh yeah. We were watching something the other night. Um, it was like a football game mm-hmm. and he was talking about how it was a catch or not a catch or whatever. And whatever he said was right. And he looked at me and it was like, I mean, I'm not right a lot, but when I am, <laughs> it feels really good. And I was like, Dude, I love that. So it's just so same, pure, right? Same. Yeah. Yes. It's the same feelings we all have, so good when but they you're just right. say it I know. because they have no filter in their kids so good when and they can right. do whatever they want. Oh man. Okay. Well, we hashed through a lot. We did. <clears throat> so next week, next week is we going to be episode 43, working on a guest. Working on a guest. Our New Year's resolution should be to plan better, but I feel like our show is so much better when we don't plan. We just it have is, a glass of wine I did and a, shoot the shit. I did a Twitter poll. You did do a Twitter poll. And I, so Twitter polls <laughs> last for 24 hours and I retweeted the Twitter poll oh, in the 23rd hour. <laughs> I was like, oh good. Oh like, good. Oh. Oh. I was okay. like, how do I? So what did they this? want? What did our voters Majority want? Majority wanted a parenting talk and randomness. Okay. You know what? The score. This, then sports, then guests. Mission accomplished. Yes, we can do that. We're random AF. I know. We are random AF. I told you, or I didn't tell you, I reached out to someone who I saw. She kept popping up in my Facebook ads about like parenting expert and how to get your kids from whining and blah, 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 blah. I reached out to her and I think they might be coming on the show soon because I'm struggling with screen time Um, and I'm struggling with whining. And we also had someone that commented that wanted to know a little bit more about like teen problems. Because we talk a lot about our young kids because we have young kids, but there's... A whole nother world of problems when they hit like age 11. Yeah, let's think about, we could, we could do a mom's round table and do like some other, like maybe That's a great two idea. more age. I like, so I'll find, we could bring a friend with teenagers yeah. and then some with like preteen. Yeah. Cause we're talking about the birds and the bees, but what happens when they oh actually my gosh. hit puberty? Think about and it. when you have to talk about like your child having a girlfriend or a boyfriend or boyfriend, but yeah. I'm saying girlfriend cause your boy's older. Right. So, and same with me, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know how I'll even handle that whole situation. We'll handle it. It's going on next door. We'll she tells it. me the funniest story. She's like, they tried to close their door in the room today. And I walked by and I just opened that door. It's like, oh my uh-uh. God, I can't. Oh yeah. So, so yeah. There's and then we can <laughs> tell stories about when we got busted doing stuff. Who? Did you ever get busted? Yeah. We'll save it for another. <laughs> we'll save that for I'm going to need a few glasses of wine yeah, for we'll that. Get, we'll load up and <laughs> get ready to reveal those. And I then know. I also thought for, so we got to awkward. have both our moms on. That made me think about my mom. Oh, my Lord. We got to have our moms on together. Is your mom coming back in town? Yeah, she'll be back in town maybe in actually a couple of weeks. Or okay. if we don't get it to it before, get to it before we could do Valentine's Day or we could do Mother's Okay, Day. so my mom's totally game. Okay. I'm trying. <clears throat> so, okay, one more thing. We keep rambling. It's fine. Are, is your mom getting the vaccine? How is she old enough? She's 65. So she's at that age. Okay. I texted my mom. Her. Yes. My mom. I'm like, get the vaccine. Yeah. Like, let's go. Um, so she's there. She's waiting on an appointment, but she's signed okay, up good. or whatever. Yeah. Won't so that I'm make, super oh excited. My God. Yes. Cause there's nothing worse than like grandparents that can't see their effing grandkids. Cause they're worried. I know. About and she still sees ours, but she's them. kind of, re- yeah, it's just, everything's been jacked up. So it's anyway. messed up world. Okay. Vaccines are good. First episode of 2021 is in the books. <laughs> We, I think we killed it. Slate it. Totally slate it. Totally slate okay, it. we'll see you next Here's week proof. for We're episode empty. episode 43. <laughs> it's not a facade. It's We're not. really drinking. We are. All right. Until next time. Thanks Mom for game. being with us. Mom game out. Mom game out. Mom game out.